<laughs> Looking back on my career, it seemed like yesterday I was at Emerald City Comic Con as an artist for the first time, and um, so many things happened at once. You know, you could be, you could go from kind of dreaming about doing it to actually doing it, and then meeting people early on. And that's kind of where you felt like, I wouldn't say that I made it, but I got my foot in the door. Now it's up to me to kind of do what I can with it. And one of those people that, you know, gave me advice early on, and um, he wasn't aware of it when I mentioned it to him in this episode, it was Ryan Benjamin. Uh, he, he's very, uh, what do you, how do you say this? Unassuming and um, down to earth. And you're going to get to see exactly what he felt and how he felt about that time. And not having any idea that what he said had such a huge impact on me. You know, and I think taking that to heart, that's kind of how I feel when I approach new artists or they approach me. Um, you kind of just give advice because you want the best for them. And then you also know what it feels like, you know, to kind of be new at something especially in the art world because it's it's pretty scary to step out and and you know because art's so personal to put yourself out there and hope that the world appreciates what you have to offer anyhow without further ado here is ryan benjamin yep ryan's gonna be drawing wolverine i guess on a sketch cover so that's pretty epic yeah why i decided to like contact you was you were one of the first comic book artists that reached out to me and I did some photos of you years ago at Emerald City and that was when I basically started out in comics you know and you kind of took me under your wing and gave me some some really nice little feedback and some um, some advice even though you probably didn't know it was a big deal but it was like for the next nine or so years like I took that with me like you know how to be with other artists and how to uh, carry yourself as an artist. You probably didn't know, but like I take that to heart. So I did not. Thank you, Ryan. <laughs> well, uh, thank you. I guess uh, I, I had no idea this is uh, this happened. So cool. <laughs> I, I, I remember the conversation. I just didn't know you took it to heart, but sure. <laughs> yeah. I appreciate it. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. Um, and you know, and that's kind of what I was wondering. Like you. You've been doing this for a long time, so obviously there's something about your work ethic, uh, your passion for the, the art, and then, you know, even to take people under your wing, and obviously you have, like, the Comic Book Pro boot camp now, so you do take that to heart, and, uh, and I'm assuming that your passion is what keeps you going, you know, so what do you think contributes your longevity in comic books? Um, number one is... I would. Oh, I can't really say that. That's. I, I was gonna say don't don't piss off your editor, but I can't really say <laughs> that either. You know, because you know, I'm pretty sure I've, I've knocked heads with with some editors out there, um, but not many. Not many. I'm I'm too nice. Um, I think. I think. Well, first of all, you have to have the drive and the passion to do this. Um, for me, it just happened to be that art, drawing, painting, that's just a hobby for me. If I was a, a carpenter or, you know, a plumber or the president of the United States, I would still find time to pick up a pencil and some paper and still draw and still paint and still do some inking and draw and work in comics. I would still find that time to do it. So I think that my... I, I figured out a way to not just me, but many people, and I, I encourage a lot of people to do this: is to find a way to take your hobby and how do you make money out of it? How do you turn that into a career? And I think that's probably the way of how how you create happiness in your in your life in your career. So it, it, essentially, at some point, you're you're going to wake up every single day and. You're not going to, um, you're not going to hate your job. You would do your job for a dollar, or you do it for fifteen thousand dollars. You know, it doesn't matter how much it is. You're just happy that you're, you're you're doing this. And I know it because I've run into a lot of different artists around the world who's exactly like that. They they will, I will pay them this, and they're happy with it. I'll pay them that, and they're just still happy with it. So um, I, I try not to let you know uh, any. Um, and money or anything like that um, 
depict what I work on or or the direction I go. Um, don't 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 tell that to a lot of people. I try to keep that my secret, but um, I try to keep it to my heart and just it it to me it's a passion thing. It's the ability to pick up a pencil and create, and I happen to make money out of it too. Cool. That's <laughs> that's what it is for me. Yeah, and it shows with your work because you you keep producing and you're so productive, right? And and. I think that's the one thing that a lot of new artists or people who've always wanted to do it. I know you've met tons of people who've been wanting to do it for decades, right? Like it's trying to find the time to do it no matter what you have going on in your your social life, your daily life, your schedule, your obligations as an adult. You know, like uh, you find a way to do it. Um, I guess that's the one thing is like how do you tell someone who's put it off for so long? Uh, how to, to add that time in or, or how do you fit that time into your schedule just so you draw a little bit more at a time, you know, or create stuff. Yeah, yeah, you have to find that, you have to find that time. I mean, I remember when I was in high school and we were going on field, field trips, I was in the bus with my pad drawing on the bumpy bus so the bus is like, you know, swerving and going on the roads. I'm still sketching, I'm doing it. And everyone look at me, what is he drawing now? You know, kind of like that. You just have to find a way to, to always pick up your pencil. To this day, when I'm hanging out with friends, they're surprised, oh, you don't have your sketchbook with you? Yeah, no, because I just, <laughs> I have to keep drawing. You know, I'll go, I, I, I go to my brother's house, he's having a party and everyone's hanging out, but I'm in the corner with a sketchbook. You know, I'm just like doing oh what gosh. I need to do. So, yeah, that's that's just me. That's my, my life. Um, um, I there's a part of me that recommends it to 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 a lot of people. Like you have to keep drawing co constantly, and then there's a part of me that say, hey, you know, you need a break at the same time. Take a break. Go do this. Go do that. You know, you don't want to. I think it depends on the individual, but you don't want your brain or your head to get locked into a certain area. You want to have some flexibility to to think and move and just, you know, let loose a little bit and then you can come back to your art eventually at some point, so. So I guess I don't have to ask you then how you manage it because you obviously have a family and a career, but since you love it so much, you find a way to draw regardless, right? Oh yeah, and I'm, I'm happy, I was, I was so happy the, the other day my son came to me about four or five times in a row, I wanna draw, I wanna draw, I wanna, I'm like, oh. I'm like, or, or let's do it. All right, let's do it. Let's do it. You know, so he's like, he's super excited. So I gave him, I gave him my Wacom pen. I opened up Photoshop and I picked the colors for him. I told him how to, how, how to <laughs> select your default colors, how to make selections, how, how to paint, create layers, all that stuff. I showed it to him and he's three. <laughs> I showed it to him and he's just painting away. He's like doing his thing. So I'm like, yeah, okay. He's excited. I could see it. He, it's in him. He's he's gonna he's gonna want to be an artist too at some point, so I'm gonna start training him right now. I know why because you're always you're probably smiling every time you draw right like you look excited. Imagine if he came into your office and you're crying, falling asleep. <laughs> <laughs> he's he'd probably be like I never want to touch a pencil ever in my life. <laughs> yeah yeah, but he see he sees me doing it and he wants to copy me. That's basically what I see right now because I remember when I was younger I wanted to be exactly like my dad i wanted to be like oh my dad's genius i want to do the same thing and i want to and to this day I, I i can't do it like i mean if you ask me today i wouldn't i said that was when i was younger <laughs> i'm not i wouldn't want to do what my dad's doing now but um but when i was younger absolutely yeah so i need to plant the seed i need to nurture it i need to water it i need to watch it grow fertilize it you know Put the protective casing, put it in a greenhouse, make sure it's, it's growing nice and green, you know, keep and, and, and just just keep it going throughout throughout the years and see, watch it blossom into this magnificent plant. So uh, I'm, I'm definitely um, going to do that. Was your son or your kids an inspiration for your webtoon comic, uh, Brothers Bond? No. A um, <laughs> You would never, okay, I, well... I'll just give it to you straight. My, my inspiration for that came from my frustration through work, through the the rigid certain structure of working on comics. And yeah, yeah. just the way how um, 
how these certain how I got sucked into these certain patterns for years and years and years. Meaning, an editor would call me, I get a script. I'm working on a comic, I'm penciling the, the, the comic, and I would send it in to get inked, and I was, then they would send it in to get colors, and then by the, in a month or two, I would get the colors back, and I'm looking at it, and, and in my brain, I'm like, this, that's not what I was thinking. You know, so I kind of felt like I didn't have a say in specific steps, or throughout all the steps of going, of, of de developing this comic, you know, and I told myself, okay, I need, I, I feel like I'm, my career is being depict, depicted by someone else, by a group of people, you know, staring my, because at, at, at the end of the day, when people look at a comic, they're, they're, they're going to see the final result, they're not going to see the steps. They're going to see the final result, and then they're going to make a judgment based on that. But your name is the headliner. You're the headliner. Blah blah. This is the artist uh, that, that did this. That, that you know. So I'm like, I need to take more control of that instead of letting the the people in the pipeline. I'm not saying they did bad. I'm just saying it's not what was in my head. So I wanted I wanted to take more control of what's in my head and establish that 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 lineage and and just iron it out exactly so so based on that frustration i decided i'm going to draw i'm going to create my own book and i started off um thinking okay what do i want to do do i want to do a team book or a solo book i was thinking i want to do a solo book i don't want to do a team book so i created this one character and i was like okay i'm going to build a story around this character um and then i, I started off with with him as a as a young young guy like 10, 12 years old, somewhere I was thinking in that age, that age group, and then, um, and then I got as I'm as I'm brainstorming around, you know, different scenarios about this character. What, what am I going to do with him? I started hearing some some conversations from other people that's giving me hints. You know, hey, maybe you should do this. Maybe you should do that. Maybe you should do this and do that. And I started thinking, okay, maybe okay, but that's not a bad idea. And then I was thinking, you know what I want. I want to. I'm going to tap into some of my old school roots of growing up. You know, when I was when I was watching He-Man and Thundercats and Transformers as a kid. Um, so I'm going to tap into that that era of of cartoons and comics and pull ideas out of that and bring it up to up to date. Now, so I started to go in that direction. Then I started thinking, wait a minute, maybe I want to you know, let, let me tap into like the early. You know, animes, the anime styles or the animes that I used to watch. Then I started thinking of Akira, and Ninja Scroll, and all these, you know, these, these you know, uh, uh, um, uh, Vampire Hunter D, um, uh, Macross, all these things I was think, thinking about. And then I started thinking, you know what would be cool? Ninjas. Then I was like, I was like, okay, yeah, all right, I'm going to do some, some, some ninjas. <laughs> And then I was like, wait a minute, maybe some samurai slash ninjas type of thing. Since they're pretty much the same thing. And I was like, all right, I'm going to go in that direction. So, I'm, so I started thinking, okay, I have a solo character with, with, uh, with these samurai ninjas who's going to pr protect him. How are they going to protect him and why would they protect him? And what would make them so more different and cool? And I started thinking, make him blind. Blind samurai ninjas. Great. Done. I will do that. So I started thinking I'm gonna make one this one character with these blind samurai ninjas who are his pr protectors, and then from there, um, I started developing more and more of a story behind it, um, and then I started concepting the characters, and then next you know I it's on webtoons, and next you know it's nominated for an Eisner Award, and I'm like, what? Oh my god! This is crazy. It's <laughs> all just from my brain, just like let me think about this. Let me try and do this. So I'm, because of that, I'm actually in the process of developing another IP. I'm not going to talk too much about it now because I'm still in the process of developing it. Um, but I'm, I'm working on another IP based on that energy that I, I went through and I learned the ropes. I learned how I understood the process of developing uh, from, the, the, uh, from creating a character to developing the story to, to putting it in a specific world based on the ideas I want to entertain and I like and I love to I, I know I won't I won't get bored drawing this so I'm gonna go in that direction and that, and then I realize there's an audience that I need to connect this with so based on that I started thinking I think I'm gonna use that instead of me using 
the 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 um the character and the story that's living in my head as an as the driver i'm going to use the audience as a driver first and then i'm going to fashion a character and a storyline around the specific audience i'm trying to target so that's the direction i've been going and um um uh and i'm currently under development i am not going to talk about it uh um i did talk about it in the past but i'm not going to talk about it in this so um, oh, I had to interview you again. Yeah, you just interview me again when it's when it's out, when when the book is is ready for people to see, and because I'm 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 trying to win the Eisner with this one here. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> I learned I learned a lesson. I'm like, I think I know where to go. You need to ride this wave. You need to. That's part of it. If you just stop for a minute and just sit back and look at the look at the certain things just coming out look at how they're they're, they're being targeted towards a specific audience that's a wave you know and so you have to learn to ride that you know once you learn to, yeah, to yeah. ride that then it helps you develop ips a little bit a little bit more easier you know so. and quicker right like uh i'm on the same boat as you like i was actually starting my comic book it's or manga it's called uh dragon's glacier same process as you it's like let's put Everything in this cauldron, I love this, I love that, I love this, my audience loves that, so I'm just going to do that. Oh, I have a, a YouTube audience, I'll just throw that in there and then just swirl it around. It's so much fun, and they like watching that because you see something manifest in like almost real time, right? So it's pretty cool that we could do that now. And you have this motivation to get it done because you have people like, a lot of them root for you to, to see you succeed because that also means that they could do it too. If you could do it and you, you set that trend, then people start doing that and you're excited because it is your IP, and you're also surprised because you did it so fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I was oh, I was knocking yeah. it out really fast, man. So, so it was, I was doing when I was working on webtoons. I was doing doing the book for webtoons. I was producing a, 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 an episode every five to seven days. I was doing oh, an man, entire comic simple. book, put pencil, ink, and color within five to seven days. <laughs> so thank you for telling me. Okay, <laughs> so get to work, you guys. You lazy people out there. You're not moving fast enough. You gotta, you gotta draw faster. You gotta beat me. Beat me. Five to seven days. Draw an entire comic book in five to seven days. Let's see you do it. Actually, I, I think I know. I, I was talking to Ken, Ken Lashley uh, about it recently, and he told me that he did a book in 24 hours. So I guess he did beat me. But it was not color. It was only pencils and inks. So ha. We'll see. Oh, okay. Okay. I'm game. I'm going to try. I'm All right, gonna try. try. At least, because at least if you get to half of where you're at, you're in good shape, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Somewhere yeah, around yeah. there. So. I will, you know what? I'm going to just let you start drawing and, and maybe come up with some stuff to ask you. Am I, am, am I going to do a, a, a cover for your, um, for your, for your book? Am I going to yeah. like an alternate cover for your book? I'm putting you on the spot, yeah. right? <laughs> I asked you without asking you. No, I, I was going to say, hey, I like your style. Uh, uh, Brothers Bond, it's closer to what I'm doing with What are you book, doing? So. Okay. Yeah, yep. And no, it only makes sense that you, of all people, get to do one. Because <laughs> you're my mentor, right? <laughs> yeah, you're, I'm a mentor. Yeah, that's true. That's true. <laughs> all right. Yeah, so. that, was, that was pretty cool. So. Okay. All right. Which costume are we going with for Wolverine? Ah, uh, so I'm, I'm, I, I don't know. I'm, I don't know if I maybe not do a costume. I haven't. Every time I draw Wolverine, he's in a costume. I'm thinking, let me draw him just with his hair and no costume, just his bare chest maybe and his claws. That's what I'm thinking. Oh, that'd be cool. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do that because every time someone asked for Wolverine, they're like, oh, do the classic, you know, costume or. Do the Jim Lee version, or do this, you know, they'll, they'll tell me that, so, I'm like, okay, all right, so, I think I'm gonna do what I want to do this time, so, all right, let's do this, so, um, you want me to, like, just talk and demonstrate as, as I'm doing this, or just, yeah, sure, or just, sure, just yeah. go, am I, is, are we quiet, are we gonna play music in the background? Uh, it's up to you, I, mean, I don't know, whatever works, however you get your zen, whether it's music or just me talking, like, at a convention while you're drawing, <laughs> Maybe I'll do that. All right. All right. Yeah, so, yeah, so you ahead. can ask me questions as I'm drawing, and I'll, I'll answer. So basically, what I like to do when, I'm, when I do covers, um, I like to draw on both sides uh, because I like drawing big. I, I hate drawing, you know, 
tiny, like if I'm just gonna do it on the front. But there are times some people will ask me for a remark or they will ask me for, oh, just do this and do that. And then I'm, I'll stick with whatever they're asking for. But if they just send me like a blank cover and they say, hey, draw something, trust me, you're gonna get a full front and back uh, uh, a piece. So this is the, this is my angle. I'm I'm gonna I'm trademarking this this angle so no artists copy me. Please don't 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 rip me off on this one. So basically, I like to draw the heads here, and then I like to draw the rest of the body over here. So the rest of the body could be the sh a shoulder with an arm doing something. So it could be an arm coming out you out at you, or arm just standing there maybe some kind of crazy effect or something like that. But that's like my standard layout is the head. Uh, this is the head right here and the head kind of uh, kind of pointing, looking in like this, this direction a little bit and kind of pointing and doing something. I don't know, but since this is Wolverine, I'm thinking, I'm, I'm already thinking of a shape. Uh, I'm thinking of, um, specific angle I think I'll do this with his claws coming this way maybe I'll do maybe I'll do his other hand coming this way too yeah I think I'll do that okay his hands coming this way one hand here head so it's, it's in red right now it might not be picking up on the camera but trust me it's there um, <laughs> I'm, uh, the reason why I'll explain this one the reason why I use red red pencils is that um, it's, I'm doing all my thinking right now. You guys are literally watching me think. I'm thinking of, uh, of where am I gonna go? And I'm trying not to think in like, um, in a very um, linear way. It's, this is very organic. So it's, I'm, I'm trying to feel it more than think it. So when I'm, I'm, my brain is thinking Wolverine, cool. Wolverine automatically has this pose cool now how am i going to put that pose on this page and make it work and and once i lay it down with the red with the red pencil when i jump in with a regular pencil it's it, it's just extremely easy from this point because all my thinking's done i don't have to think about it i don't have to erase i know exactly where the hand is going to go i know what angle the head is, is going to be i know where the shoulders are i know where the lighting is going to be and it's just go 100% from zero to, to 100 miles an hour immediately because um, I'm done with all my thinking. So does that mean that when you are laying out, you don't listen to music or podcasts oh, because do. you have to focus? You do? Okay. I listen to a lot of stuff. Um, I, I, um, I listen to many, many things. Uh, uh, sometimes I'll listen to I'll listen to weird stuff. I'm very much into like UFOs. So I'll listen to like, like yeah. UFO podcasts. Um, uh, lately I've been researching a lot about, uh, near, near death experiences. So I'll listen to, 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 to those. Um, uh, I like, I play music sometimes. Sometimes I'll, I'll just turn on something like I'll, I'll just put a movie in the background, just let it play. Um, and I, I don't even watch it. So it's just playing and I'm just listening to the audio and just kind of following through the movie in my head. Um, like I've watched the, I've watched aliens maybe 700 times and I, I am I can watch it another 700 times and it won't bug me because I'm not really watching it it's just playing in the background it's just, to me it's like a soundtrack for me so yeah 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 I guess that answers that too I, I was gonna say like because some people say you you know they prefer nothing silence when they're laying stuff out but sometimes my silence I start talking to myself and it's not even about when I'm drawing so it doesn't help me and I would open the door to listen to birds, but it's cold, so I can't even have background noise, like natural sound. It's horrible. It's still snowing. Oh, there's still snow. It was snowing yesterday. It's like never ending. Do you are, are you sick of it, or do you go out there and try try to snowboard or something? I was gonna snowboard this year, but I so I started the publishing company um, late winter, so I haven't had the chance to go up into the mountain. But it's literally. 45 minutes away, so I should probably do that next year. <laughs> it's already too late now. Um, yeah. No, I love it. It's just, uh, you know, trying to start the, the business and the comic book and stuff and then trying to get... I mean, going to the gym to me is the extent of it and then maybe backpacking a couple of times in the summer just to get out, but um, that's about it. Yeah. 
Yeah, I, I live out in the and I live in San Diego, so I, I I'm I'm kind of in the city part, you know. So I don't really there's not a lot of woods or <laughs> there's a park next to me. That's about it. But there's there there are mountains and stuff like that you can go, you know, climbing and stuff like that. Um, and th there are areas where you can go hiking, like way out in the middle of nowhere. Um, but you have to drive about, you know, an hour or two hours just to even get to it. Yeah, that's the thing. I, that's why we, we like it here, because everything is basically right, right outside your door. So you don't have to drive a long ways just to get get that, you know, nature fix, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, I know. I I need to I need to go to like one of these national parks and go check it out. Go we'll see what's up. I've been to um, I've been I've hiked the Grand Canyon before. Have you ever tried that? No, I, I haven't. We drove through it just to get to Vegas, though. It was pretty. <laughs> I hiked all the way to the bottom and to the top of the Grand Canyon in one day. Um, uh, it's it was brutal. <laughs> I mean, it was hot too. I'm, I'm assuming. By the it time was hot, but when you got down to the bottom, actually, we started really early. We started at like five in the morning, so it was dark. And then by the time we got to this ridge, we we hiked down and we got to this one ridge where the sun was creek was coming up, and it was so beautiful. It's like the colors Aww. and the lighting and the, how where the sun hits the canyon as a, as you as you. It's some of the most beautiful things you've ever seen in your life amazing yeah. lighting that's there um i just remember it was like a ledge and it was a bunch of people and i stood next to the ledge and i looked down and i, I was like oh crap i'm way up here at the top of the, the, this cliff <laughs> so uh but it was beautiful um and then we hiked all the way down to the bottom it 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 took it was it, it was a, the entire trip was 17 hours um seven, 17 hour hike it took, and I rested wow. three times for an hour each. Dang. Yeah, so. <laughs> How heavy was your backpack? Uh, it was, I didn't bring that, that much. I just brought one, um, uh, one uh, uh, MRE. <laughs> A friend of mine gave me an, an, an MRE to, to take with me, and I was like, oh, cool, I take that with me. So I had that. I had like, like uh, just like one or two water bottles. Um, uh, but when you get down to the bottom, you, there are pipes to fill the, the, the your, oh, um, nice, nice, nice. your oh, water cool. bottles too. So you can fill it and then go back up to the top. Um, so I got all, I went all the way down to the bottom. We crossed over, uh, there was a bridge at the bottom. I remember crossing that bridge, we crossed the river. We went up the other side, we hiked up a little bit. And then we got to the point where you can literally cross the river because it was pretty low. You could just like jump rocks and just like kind of, you know, you know, go over to the other side, and there's just a little campground where you can you can ha you can hang out there. So we were down there for a little bit, and then on the way up, I decided because my feet was killing me, I decided to just take my shoes off and just do grounding. So I walked the last half of the 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 the, the, the canyon, going all the way up to the top with no shoes on, um, and it was great because the ground was cold. So you oh, have this nice, so cool. crisp, refreshing feeling on your foot right when you're going, when you're walking. Because my feet was killing me at the time. I just took my shoes off and it was just like, oh man! And it was dirt. It wasn't rocks. It was like just like oh, dirt. It, wasn't rocks. it was like, soil. Dirt, kind of? It was like just just red, like reddish soil that was like there. Soil type thing. Okay. Yeah. So so I did that and you know I had some fun with that one. So if you, if you guys haven't tried it, you should try it one one day. Just go hike it. The only thing I would say is that when, when we were done with the hike, um, we got up to the top of the, the, the very end, at the very, very end of the, the hike, when we got to the trail, there was a giant sign that gave you all these warnings and said, you know, don't do this or don't do that, so do this or do, do, do that. And there was a portion of it that said, it had a picture of this, uh, this marathon runner, and it was a woman, and it said, this woman died going all the way down to the bottom and back up. She died doing that. So don't attempt to do it in one day. And I and I literally just, just did it myself. So I'm like, oh, wow. I just did what they warned you not to do. When I was done, I just laid flat on the ground. And I was like, oh, I just laid there. My body, my entire body was like shaking. Like, oh man, I don't believe I did this. But I was in shape though. This was years ago. This was probably 
Um, I want to say it was like 2011. It could have been 2012, one of those days, I don't know. So I'm um, trying to establish um, shapes to make it look like Wolverine. I hope this camera, you know, the camera's picking it up so you should be able to see it. So I'm just quickly establishing shapes right now to establish where are certain things going to live. And from here, I'm going to when I'm done, I'm going to shade everything and make everything look nice and pretty. And are there some days you realize that if you you're not focused enough, your shapes look kind of funky, and you keep doing it over and over again? Like I can't get past certain stages because I don't like the shape initially, even before I um, start inking and stuff. There, there are times I do run into that where I'm drawing and I'm like, oh, I'm just not getting it, you know. Um, usually what I'll do is I'll just drop my pencil immediately and walk away from the table and I'll, I'll go do some something else. I'll take a break. I let I have a, a, a PlayStation 5, so I'll just sit here and play like Call of Duty for a little bit. Um, oh, which one are you playing? Uh, um, the, the, well, Call of Duty, um, the recent one. I, my, my, I, I, have, I have a brain. Or Black Ops or something? Black, Black Ops, I, I play that. I definitely play Black Ops. Um, and um, I also play, uh, sometimes I play Battlefield, sometimes I'll play, um, there's a Tom Clancy game that I play uh, also, what's the name of it, I can't remember the name of it, my brains are like uh, all over the place. Uh, Rainbow Six? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, it's not, not Rainbow Six, it's another one. Um, the other one, okay. Uh, gosh, what's the other <clears> one? <throat> yeah, my fiance and I, we play um, World War Two, the uh, one that was for the PS4, but we have it on the PS5 and like... He and I just, like, I hate watching him play because he runs around with a shotgun, and um, I'm not quite as strategic as him, and I always get, get hit in the back with some flamethrowers or something. But <laughs> that's, how we, that's how we take out our uh, relationship frustrations is <laughs> in the video game. I'm going to outrank you today, but that never happens. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to outrank <laughs> you today. That's crazy. Oh. Yeah. All right. So... Here I am. I'm trying to quickly lock in certain features. Um, from here, let's see what I can do. I'm gonna try. Sometimes, sometimes what I'll do. What I was taught not to 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 do this, but sometimes I still do it, which is I'll start to cross hatch and start to render immediately mm -hmm. uh, because I feel like I'm stitching as I'm going. I'm just kind of immediately st stitching and moving and and uh, and it's this is this stems from me trying to meet my deadlines consistently because when i'm drawing um uh, I, I i don't have time to draw come back draw come back draw come back you know but i was taught to draw the whole page out just the out outline first because you want to lay the whole thing out make sure everything's locked into place all the the proportions then come in and start doing all the cleanups, all your shading, and then your your, your, your cleanups. Um, but for me, I like speed. So I rely on my fundamentals, which I already know it. So I just quickly lay it out with my red pencil, and then I just go immediately in, into it. So the, 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 the downside to this is that you can you can shoehorn yourself because let's say I'm, I'm drawing this face and I'm drawing it and I love it so much but then at, in 25 minutes when I'm drawing this hand over here and mm -hmm. the hand's not working with this face now I'm kind of stuck like where, where am I going to go am I going to erase the hand am I going to erase the face you know kind of like that so that can happen but I'm pretty creative enough where I can come up with with a way of making it work so I just I, I don't really let that you know stop me from 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 producing what I need to produce. That's my hurdle too. Uh, uh, like right now I was doing Lady Mechanica yesterday, but for two days I was on the same panel because I shoehorned myself and I'm like, come on, just because I had a layout sent out a certain way and I got it approved and I'm like, but that looks funny now that I rendered it. Yeah. I need to fix a few things. So I'm like, finally just erased the whole panel and just started to just lay it out on the page itself instead of like just reverting back to that really bad layout. <laughs> yeah, I know. So. <sighs> I'm, I'm t I, I've, I've been there before, um, so I, I totally get it. And you sink all that time into it, too. And you're like, dang, I just spent five hours already. <laughs> I can't make up for that. I know. Oh. But I'm, I'm pretty fast. Get, guess, how, guess how fast I'm, I am. Uh... Well, obviously, like you did, what, how many, you said a whole uh, chapter in 
five to seven days colored. So that's that's dang fast. So at shows, um, when I'm at shows, I do commissions, right? Um, mm -hmm. And you, will, I, I'm gonna let you guess the the number, guess the amount of commissions like this, like someone brought me like a piece like this or I had a, a, a piece of paper and I did like uh, I was only doing head headshots and busts that's all I was doing I wasn't doing any full full bodies so how long how many do you think I was knocking out um from the time the show started to the time that the, the show closed how many do you think I, I got done and that's one day right one day okay I'm gonna let you guess uh, do the math do 16. 16? 16? You, think, you thought I did 16? Are you sure? Uh, if you're doing like... You want to re revise that one? I'll give you a second chance oh. to revise it. Oh my god. 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 <laughs> I did 108 of these in one day uh, at a show. How it happened is that, you know, when you're at Comic Cons and you're doing this or whatever, um, you're drawing and there's people that constantly approach your table and they want to talk or you have to make a sale and do this. I, I had none of that. I had other people to do all my talking, all my sales for me. So I, all I did was 100% was draw. Okay, what do you want next? Okay, cool, draw. What do you want next? Okay, cool, draw. What next? And it was that the entire day. I think I took a short break just to just to eat something, and then after that, I got right back into it and I started drawing. I did 108. Well, let's just say people stopped you. What would it bring you down to if that was? Uh, it well it. It really depends because it depends on the conversation too. Because some people, when I'm having a conversation, is very is very interesting and I want to talk about it. But then there are times when I'm I don't have time for the conversation, so I'm just trying to, you know, quickly knock some something out. So it really depends on what are we talking about, what's the conversation about, and do I even have time? Um, and if I do, and it. If if I'm having a lot of conversations, then we're talking like, okay, maybe I'll get 10, 15 of them done because I'm talking too much. But if I'm not talking, I can I can push it. I can push it. I, I should try that just with myself. Try to do, well, yeah, sketch covers and see if I could do at least 10 an hour. I'd be happy with that. So I have to practice too. <laughs> Oh, and the cool thing about it is I've developed a pattern from doing that. I have a pattern of knocking things out really fast. Um, what I do is I, 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 I quickly lay out my reds. And, and I remember I said, once I have the layouts done, it's just go. So once I have the reds, I immediately go into the shadows. I start knocking all the, all the blacks, all the shadows, everything, and then I'll come back and I'll do all my fine lines and all the details with eyes and stuff like that. I'll do all that. And then I'll close it out with, with white. I'll put some white on top of it just to clean it up a little bit, you know, erase some of the, the, the errors that I make. And, and my average piece that I was doing them at was about four to six minutes. Okay. I can't wait to see this video of yours so I could, uh, I'm going to approach it. Your, I'm going to see how, based off of what you said, how I could uh, retrofit that to my own stuff. <laughs> uh, and, and guess what? I decided to document it. So I recorded a um, uh, hundred Batman heads uh, of me drawing a hundred Batman heads, and and it's and it's all timed and everything. I haven't put the video up on YouTube yet, but uh, uh, it's being edited right now of me drawing one hundred Batman heads, um, and we're gonna be uh, I'm gonna be putting up up on my channel. So nice. Well, that's a good ad for. I will make sure that, let me know if I could uh, update the uh, description, but I'll go ahead and put that video link too, when, whenever you do that. That would be really cool. Oh, dude, I, can, I, I, want, I want you guys to see it and be, be amazed how fast I, I can do this. <laughs> fast and awesome, right? Like focusing only on the stuff that matters. Yeah, yeah. Like... 
Well, I, I chose Batman because Bat Batman's super easy, um, and I've drawn him a, a, a billion times, so <laughs> he's like super, super easy. But I'm, I'm going to do another one, too. I'm going to do 100 Joker heads. I'm going to do um, 100... Um, I'm gonna, just going to keep a theme of that going, so... Oh, that's actually smart. Are you going to release, like, a, an art book or something with all the different themes that you go with, like a sketch book? Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah, cool. It's coming out, so people will see it. So, like, now that we brought that up, um, you know the Comic Book Pro Boot Camp... Now that, so are you guys still doing the uh, training online still, or are you going back to in-person uh, instructions? Both. So we are doing both in-person and um, the online training. Um, the online training will be the, the primary source of it, and then every once in a while we'll come together and we'll have, like, the, the actual in-person workshop. Um, and... Um, and it's it's the workshop involves uh, me, Wills Portasio, Carlos Deanda, and Alex Sinclair. So you get uh, a good amount of um, uh, instructions from from all of us. And it's uh, it's not a one day thing. It's a three day workshop. So you come in and you, you treat it as though you you come in and you you want to learn how to draw comics from pro professional artists. And that's what we do. We teach it. And we, we'll bring in, like, special guests from, from time to time. So, so you, might, you, might, you might just see Saya there one day. <laughs> Are you guys based in San Diego or L.A.? Or? Uh, we're, we're mobile. <laughs> we're not locked in one place. We go wherever we need to go. So oh, we, cool. we are, um, yeah, so we travel. We, we're we're going to be doing some stuff on the East Coast. We do, we do stuff on the West Coast. So um, so when people see us, you know, they can sign up and they can come check out the, the workshop when we come into town. So, okay, so that means like if there was a convention, people, if you knew ahead of time, you would be able to do workshops maybe a few days in advance, I see. We've run, we've run a couple workshops already at shows. We've run some at, at WonderCon. We did one at San Diego. We've, um, we, I just, I just, we just recently did another one at, at the, the recent one, WonderCon. And we're getting ready to do another one at San Diego too. So that's the main two shows we've been doing them at. Um, we're looking to expand at, at, with other shows actually. Um, so, so we're, we're actually in the process of working that entire thing out so you guys will see it um and when you get a chance just come in and get be prepared for me be prepared to cry i should say maybe not cry right um meaning this um when you i i am the type when when you're drawing in front of me i will take your pencil from your hands and i will erase <laughs> your errors and i'll correct it right there in front of you so be prepared for that so if you're the type of artist that don't like people to to draw over your stuff or you don't you can't take criticism you probably don't want to take this workshop because um i will critique your work and i will um i will tell you when you're going wrong and when you're going correct well you, you say that but i think also um if you don't like that kind of stuff it's hard to get better and then become a professional artist in general right that's like the prerequisite Exactly. Is that. That's that's why I do it. It's because you need you need to be broken down. You've been walking your entire life. You've been you know how to put one foot in front of the other and you've been doing it. Don't tell me how to walk. I know how to walk. This is how I've been doing. My mom taught me how to walk. My I walk to school, I walk to work, blah, blah, I know what I'm doing. And here I am, I'm coming in and telling you, no, you're walking wrong. Let me show you how to walk correctly. So some people can take it to to heart, to, to heart. Um, especially with art, because art is personal. Art is not um, to people to speak, people who, who understand, and some people who don't. I'll, I'll explain to the people who don't understand it. Um, art is very personal. It's your expressing who you are on the inside, but you're doing it on paper. Now, now it, it's not necessary, necessary paper, but in whatever you're performing, it could be through acting, it could be through singing, it could be rapping, it could be through dancing, whatever it is, it's all art. It's even in cooking. 
So you're cooking something for someone and then someone tastes your food and then they're, 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 they're critiquing it. Like, oh, this is too salty or this blah, blah, blah. In your head, you're like, oh man, these, oh, it tastes good. I like it, but you don't know what it, I'm pretty sure we've, we've all seen Gordon's show, how he goes around and critiques it. <laughs> he, he crushes people's soul and, you know, he changes their restaurants. So uh, uh, this, so this one I'm talking, I'm talking about, it's, it's it's very personal to to people because it's it's an inner expression and you're showing the world, ah, this is who I am, this is what I do, and here and then here comes someone who's been doing it longer than you and who's better at it at you and comes and crushes you, and it can hurt. So, so, um, so people can take it to heart, but you need to get hurt you need to get cut you need to get your bones broken so you can regrow those the new legs regrow a, a new strategy a new form of of how of how you approach something you need to to go through the rough to get to the good to understand it you know and it you and some some people can adapt super fast some people it takes years for them to to understand it um I remember Cheeks, uh, Sean Galloway. Some people know Sean, Sean Galloway. When I oh, first, yeah, yeah, I know Sean. when I first met him, um, I, he was he was. I remember him squirreling stuff, and I was looking. I was like, "Oh, okay, he's pretty good." He, but he doesn't. He does. He's not published. He's not doing anything. I'm like, "Oh, okay, wow, he, you did this. It was pretty good." He was just kind of drawing and quiet and in secret, and then I started hanging out with him and we would draw more and then I would watch his work and I'm like looking at how how he was drawing this and drawing that and I realized he draws all his women the same way he draws his men and I had to get on him on the I was like dude you cannot do that your women look like men they look like masculine men you can't all the time. you have to be feminine with it you know you have because you're you're not just drawing what's in your head now you're entertaining an audience at this point you have to be able to to capture and and and, and move it in certain directions um and i remember critiquing him to the point he he was i want to say that he i, I won't say that but this <laughs> but he did he, he did get emotional and then i was like okay all right um uh, uh, but he took it to heart and, and I told him immediately after that, I was like, dude, you have the potential to be one of the best artists in this industry. You have the potential. I, I told him, I give you two years. If you take some of these notes that I'm giving you and you, within two years, you're going to be one of the best artists in this industry that everybody wants to work with. One year later, he was already the lead artist on, on the Hellboy animated show. Next year after that, he was on Spectacular Spider-Man. I was like, dude, I told you, I could see it. This is where it's coming. You're you go in this direction, and you're gonna be you're gonna be so you're gonna you're gonna be like a, a like. I hope you can cuss on this. You're gonna be a badass artist, you know. So it's so he's there, and now look at him. He's like blossom, and he's he's like I gave him wings, and he he flew away. And now he's he's flying high. You know, you know, Cheeks is like that, that's that's my man, that's my buddy, and uh, uh, and 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 I was I'm happy to to have a you know a hand in in aiding him in in pointing out certain things that he was wrong and correcting him and coaching him and going back and forth. He actually coached me also. In fact, bro <laughs> Brothers Bond probably wouldn't be what it is if it wasn't for Cheeks, honestly, because. Um, during the time when I was creating the, that comic, um, I, I I would reference Cheeks Cheeks' work a lot, and I would email him stuff and ask him, "What do you think? What do you think here? What do you think here?" And he would scribble some notes back, and he would send it back to me. And I'm like, "Oh, I see where he's going." So we were going back and forth, just brainstorming on how how can how can I form and reform these characters into what I what I really want them to look like and how to make them more animated and get this more cartoony type of fe feature in them so 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 he he definitely played a hand in that and I, I I actually gave him props in the credits if you if you guys ever get get the book you will see I think I did it on web webtoons also but you will see I, I gave him thanks for you know all all that he's he's given all inspiration he's given me in creating the comic so uh so big up cheeks and um and, and <laughs> that, that's 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 my story and I'm sticking with it 
the, the uh, extent of how I know him is obviously his art, but we follow each other on like the Instagrams, the Twitters, and the Facebook stuff. Like, I guess once you get to a certain point, like that's the fun part is being able to talk to people you look up to or that came along the way with you and stuff. And it's just uh, it's a special bond that you share with these people, you know, that you don't really get outside of what we do because they don't understand you the same way, the way that you think and, and process, you know, the stuff that we do. And it's just a, it's a special bond, you know? Yeah. <clears throat> Sorry, we need to sit down and draw and draw together. Other than this, we should just go sit down and draw. And next, at the next show, we'll do a drink and draw together or something and just... Oh, was, yeah, my fiance is like, you should do a drink and draw. I'm like, oh, yeah, if I could figure out how to get get my internet to work perfectly and so there's some things I could do to get it to work but I think that would be a lot of fun um you know what I I, yeah. I, I, I tried one time I went to drink and draw and I started drinking and I tried drawing and it did not work <laughs> I was like I can't drink and draw man well, who came up with this I know I, the original wasn't a Dan Panosian and uh what and uh, a couple other guys right they came up with the original drink and draw yeah, I think so. Did, didn't they have like a, a show? They would they they took it online eventually. I think. Yeah, it's online now. I think yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Uh, it's on YouTube. Um, I should probably just start watching it because you get free access to other people's uh, approach to drawing. <laughs> you know. Yeah, so it's it's crazy, man. I I can't do any. If I ever do a drink and draw with with Dan and whoever else, you know, Dan, don't give me any alcohol because I can't do it. So <laughs> I'm okay. Okay with that. Yeah, yeah. Give me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll take tea. I'll take tea. Tea's good. Um, no, no milk. I don't. I don't do dairy. So. <laughs> yeah, I don't either. Um, do you drink like chamomile before bed, or do you like the the green matcha? Yeah, I drink cam cam chamomile not before bed. I drink it throughout the day. It calms me down. You know, it it makes me settle down. Like, I I feel settled when I drink it. So I drink it all throughout throughout the day. I drink chai and green tea sometimes too. Green green tea has oh, ca caffeine chai. in there, that so. That my brain going. Yeah, I know, I know. So I just had a cup of chai before I jumped on here. So. I probably should get more. I like, I went through so many bags of tea. Like we had like this stash because we live in the woods. So you don't ever want to be without something because it takes you, at least half an hour to get to like a really good grocery store. So I just started drinking all this tea, and now I, yeah, I'm out. <laughs> yeah yeah you guys have a costco out there or whatever oh yeah we do it's just that i don't have the costco card my my fiance's mom does and so she buys us stuff and we split it in half <laughs> pretty convenient yeah that's cool so how are you how are you feeling about your speed right now now that i'm talking to you and you're trying to draw um I'm 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 okay. The rest of it is gonna be easy because it's it's I, once I finish this hand, everything else is just a filler. So that this is another, another thing too. I knock out the key features first because I know the areas is gonna that's gonna take me the longest. I try to attack that first, and everything else I'll fake. It's like his shoulders, his the back. It's I'll just fake it. Uh, when I'm talking about faking, is I'll probably just scribble a bunch of lines back there to. To, to, to indicate something, you know, some something that looks shoulder-like, and I'll leave it like that. So it's it's not like I'm literally drawing each and every detail of his shoulder. I'm not doing that. I'm just okay. I'm just gonna scribble a shape, and then okay, great. The shape looks like it's 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 a shoulder done. I, I did my job, you know. So it's kind of like that. So I'm doing this in pen pencils right now. So it's moving. Okay, I'm gonna um, see if I could. Speed this up a little bit. I like I like turning my page around um, because you get really good angles. When you do this, and and it it works better, you know, depending on the you know the, the stroke that you're moving things. <clears throat> so I'm just doing that. And I'm moving fast too. Enough. So all you slow artists out there, uh, <laughs> stop drawing slow. Okay. You saw, <laughs> you saw how I'm drawing, right? I'm I'm not drawing. I'm not trying to draw his blade. I'm just gonna throw a line and then clean it up. So I'm just gonna throw the line, and even though there's a straight line here and there, just clean up that straight line. It doesn't matter. Just clean it up like that, and that way you can knock out his claws in like seven seconds or whatever, however long it takes. You know. Just 
speed it up a little bit. Uh, some of it's also being, um, do you feel like you have to put in the hours, obviously, to get really fast and also not overthinking it too sometimes? Yeah. Or yeah. You don't want to overthink it. I try to, the way how I teach it to people is I try to teach it, teach them to feel it instead of thinking it. Um, art is a feeling, you know, you're expressing a feeling in a, in a specific medium, um, um, or, or to depict a, 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 a scenario. And so I try to capture everything I'm doing through a feeling first. And then, um, then once I have, when I, when I think I, I got it, then I will, okay, I think I got where I'm going with this. Then from there, I'll do all the cleanup work and then just kind of fake the rest, you know? Faking so it is- people probably is, ask you like, how do you fake it if you don't know anatomy? So obviously you should probably honest, learn anatomy or uh, some of the basic stuff too on the side. Yeah, anatomy is a key. I'm about to sharpen my pencil. Anatomy is key um, because if you understand anatomy, if you understand your primitives, you understand how to apply primitives, that's going to save your butt. It's going to save you out of, you know, whenever you're running into issues in the, in the future and you're trying to establish form, lighting, you know, all this stuff. Just understand your primitives first. And then once you understand that, then you will know, oh, okay, I think I know how, how this is supposed to be applied over here, over there. Um, and then once you figure that part of it out, then everything else is just, a, you know, just filling in the blanks. You know, so like here, I'm, I'm trying to establish his arm. I saw where I was going with his shoulder. So I now have to connect this arm to the shoulder. I might have to reshape the, the lower forearm to make it connect. But I know I'm going to try to shoot for his bicep somewhere in this area because it's very comfortable. He feels com comfortable. He doesn't feel strained. And I'm looking at this bicep in relation to his head. And I know there's a shoulder that's going, to, that's going to fill in there. So I could make that shoulder short. I can make it wide. It doesn't matter. All I know is I'm, I'm kind of, it's very much like, you remember when we were kids and we, did, we would have those workbooks that had those dots and you have to connect the, the, the dots. Mm -hmm. Each one of those dots is a, is, a different part, is a different part of his body. The dot is a hand. The dot is the bicep. The dot is the head. The dot is the eye. The dot is the chin. The dot is the ear. You know, so I'm thinking of it like that. It's so it's just dots that I'm connecting, and I'm but I'm placing them in 3D space as I'm going, and then um, and from there it's just fill in the blanks and just kind of just just keep drawing. So how often do you actually go to the gym and stuff and work out, or yeah. how do you take maintain your your mental and physical? I was just in the gym health, this morning. Um, I, oh. I worked out my shoulders, I worked out my biceps, and, I, I, and my, my abs. I did all three of those this morning. So how often do you go to the gym then for every week? Um, okay, so when I was younger, I would go to the gym about five times a week, okay? I used to. And then, um, um, and then you know, you get older and then life takes over and then it got to the point where I hadn't been to the gym and you know during the COVID times I wouldn't go to the gym I was I was just sitting at home you know eating Cheetos <laughs> so I noticed oh I'm getting I'm getting heavier and I'm getting fatter I can't do this I gotta I gotta you know get back in the gym so so I started you know slowly walking and then um and I, I noticed I started noticing specific health issues that I was having so I told my just from talking to doctors and this and that um, I decided, okay, I'm going to go back to my roots of how I used to train and how I used to do things. Um, and just because I already have that training mindset. So it's not, it's not hard for me to, to go back into it. So I went back to my roots and I said, I'm going to start training. And then um, I, uh, ever since December of this year, I've been hitting it hard in the gym, just, just constantly going. But I go like early in the mornings when it's quiet, when no one's around. Mm -hmm. You know, I go like five in the morning. Nobody's there. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. We go in the afternoon, so it's uh, it's kind of in the middle of the day, and sometimes I need it just to get me back in gear because you get sluggish after working a few hours in the morning. Um, yeah. Plus, it's more convenient for both of us to do it at the same time. Yeah, yeah. But I guess so. You've always had that mindset to train yourself physically as well. Um, 
But you do, I mean, I, I think people need, to, or I'd like people to understand as artists, especially because we're at our desk, that being physically fit is really important. Mm -hmm. Just if you're going to sit there and draw for long hours. But I, I don't know how to, you know, like push it where it, um, it's become, it's like the top three, right? Besides training your art in your art, it should also be your physical fitness and all that stuff too. So because I, I can give you a, a real true story that can scare you. Um, uh, this was real. Um, so I'm generally, I, I, when I was younger, uh, I, I, I was, I was on a junior Olympic swimming team. Um, I also did a lot of track and field and stuff like that. So I was constantly training and, and I started training in, in martial arts. I started training in uh taekwondo then i went to um jeet kune do then i went um to um um i then went to kempo and i started using kempo then from there i went back to Ta taekwondo then around that time the mma uh you know ufc started kicking in and i was like what is this so i'm gonna go i want to train that so i started getting into into muay thai and mma um, and then, and then I went back to Taekwondo and then I, I realized I missed the Muay Thai MMA and I went back into that. So I started training into, in that. So I've been doing that for years. Um, so I'm very, very used to, 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 to training, um, when, mm -hmm. and just doing a lot of physical activities and stuff like that. Um, and then it got to a point where I kind of, I felt like I was getting older and I needed to do this. I wanted to produce here. And so I kind of, a lot of that kind of took over, you know, and then just, just through the, the, the minutia of working, of sitting at your desk and drawing all day long and doing this and doing that, you, you, it, certain routines start to kick in. Uh, one of the bad habits or bad routines that kicked in was me drawing and snacking. I'm constantly snacking and then I'm drinking something and snacking and drawing and I'm in a seated position for hours and hours and hours. It had gotten to the point where uh, I was slouching on my chair a lot um, and, I, and I aggravated my, my back. I aggravated the disc between uh, my L4 and L5 and I was in an L shape bent over for about two months. I couldn't straighten, straighten wow. up because it had gotten to the point my back was in so much pain. So I went through therapy for that and they fixed it. Um, and then eventually in time, um, um, I realized I got back into that routine where I'm just sitting there you know, snacking away while I'm working. And one day I'm working and I happen to look down and I'm not seeing my legs. I'm seeing these giant tree stumps. So I'm like, what is this? This is not cool. This is not cool. My my ankles was like swollen. I'm like, this is ridiculous. What the heck is this? So I'm like, this is never, ever, ever again. This is gonna happen to me because this has never happened. So I immediately got up and I went. I just went outside and just went for a walk. And then in about 20 minutes, it went went back down. And I'm like, oh man, that was scary, you know. Uh, and and then I was talking to. I went to my doctor. I'm talking to my doctor about it. And they were like, stop eating this and do more of this. You know, kind of like that. And I was like, all right, let me, let me, I'll, I'll start doing that. But I didn't really take it to heart. And then I just kind of went, I kind of slowly, it was in my mind, but I, my, I saw, I was slowly falling back into like my old routine of just sitting at my desk and snacking and snacking, you know? Um, and then it got to the point where um, um, I realized that I'm having other issues that stemming from that, like that, that my ankle that swollen, that was swollen. That was a sign, you know, it's some, just some other issues. I need to start addressing these things. We're all getting older. We're all artists. We're all working in this, this giant, um, this, this entertainment medium, you know, and, and our job is to produce pencil and paper, you know, through, through, through pencil and paper. So it forces us to be stuck at a table. I'm going to encourage artists out there to find a routine, to find some time to break that, to go for a walk, go do something else, 
change certain habits that you're that you're you're stuck with but that you've been doing for years and years and years it will catch up to you take some of the, my issues as an example i'm sure some of you watching this will have issues too but trust me a lot of the issues that you're having it's stemming from your diet and your lack of physical activity so you have to change both of those um that's 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 going to keep your blood flowing it's going to keep you uh, away and you absolutely absolutely need to get some sleep because i know as an artist because i've lived it for years where <laughs> you're you're up late at night on the grind and when you're when it's late at night that's when you're feeling it you're like oh man it's two three o'clock in the morning that's when you're like oh i want to draw you're quiet you, you you got your movie playing you got your music doing you blah 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 blah, blah. and you it's a bad habit you're creating these bad habits you're not giving your body time to recover so you have to give your, your body time to recover. So what I did was um, I ended up changing my routines. I noticed that certain times I would sleep um, and certain times I, and when I was awake that I would have these certain work habits based around that. So I decided I'm gonna change those work habits and I'm gonna start sleeping throughout different times of the day so, so I can have these times that I really want to draw available to me during these times like you want to you want to draw at three in the morning don't force yourself to stay up till three in the morning drawing go to sleep earlier and then get up around three in the morning and start drawing you know that that's kind of one of the routines that I, i've developed uh and i figured that that out uh a couple of years ago and i started going in that direction and i and i noticed a lot of physical changes are starting my, my it's a lot of things are improving so that's my critique that's my uh 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 recommendation to many artists who's watching me especially the young ones because learn from us old folks that you'll see where we've gone wrong and you learn from that and you say okay i see where these guys have gone i'm not going in that direction or i'm going to go in this direction or this and that so learn from us basically that's what i'm saying learn from yeah. us you know, <laughs> fig figure it out you know you have to each person we're all individual we're all separate we have to figure out our own root routines because uh, um, we all have slightly different chemical makeups and that's really based on what you put in your mouth. You, you know, you, you are what you eat. You, you, you eat a, if you eat a Cheeto, you're going to be a Cheeto. So you got to be careful with that. <laughs> you, know? you are what you eat, you know. Um, so just be careful and con control, control your diet, control your, your, your physical activities um, and have a clarity of mind when you're coming into this, you know, do your research, figure out who you are, talk to your doctors. You know, that's the only medical advice I can say. I'm not telling you specifically what to do, but because we're all different. <laughs> I, you can only, you, all I can tell you was is my story. I can give you some su suggestions, but it's up to you to decide to do it if you want to, so. Amen. That's my old man's story and I'm sticking with it. <laughs> all right. <laughs> Too old to change it now, right? <laughs> it's yeah. encapsulated into uh, yeah. cement. Yeah, exactly. Old man's story. Man. No, I have the same type of story, give or take. It's, you know, you, you physically fall apart and mentally, and you're like, okay, I think this isn't good. I need to change something if I want to keep drawing. Um, I always get asked, like, do you get, like, a sore wrist or soreness from sitting? Like, no, I don't, because I have a stand-up desk, too, so... I, I stand up half the time anyways, and so... The sit stands, yeah. And yeah. the more I do it, the better I feel about myself as an artist, like that I'm taking care of everything else around my life just so I could draw more productively. Um, yeah. So eat your vegetables. Eat your vegetables. <laughs> <laughs> your mom would force you to eat that broccoli, and you didn't want to do it when you were a kid, and... And now you find out that, man, broccoli, that's some of the... You, should, you know, some of the stuff Maybe your parents were telling you. fresh broccoli. She was, your mom was probably feeding you like frozen broccoli frozen. <laughs> or peas and carrots. <laughs> if it was fresh, it probably tastes better. Oh man. The only thing I, I can't stand that I will never eat with my mom is that is bread pudding. Oh God, I can't take it. Oh, I, can't, <laughs> I can't handle that. I'll eat everything I'll else. Pudding, though. I, I'll not do the bread pudding. Can't do it. <laughs> oh man. Tapioca. Yeah, it's pretty good. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, it's like the vanilla flavor yeah, yeah. tapioca. Yeah, no, it's cutting. I, 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 I'm, I'm at the point where I feel like I'm back. I feel like, um, I need to get back into 
into training with how I used to train when I was when I was a junior junior Olympic swimmer because we had we had certain foods that we had to eat and we couldn't eat we had to stay away from like sodas and stuff like that and mm -hmm. they were they were heavy on carbs though they because they would say eat a lot of this a lot of that because we would burn right through it but and that <laughs> but at the time we just you're training constantly I'm talking we would we would train about six hours a day uh twice a day so um so it was not six hours like for a full training, it would be like three hours in the morning, three hours in the afternoon, something like that, you know? And we would do it. The only days off we would have was Sunday. That was it. So, so I went through some pretty brutal training uh, when I was younger. Um, and so your, your body is constantly going, 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 going. So your, your metabolism kick, kicks in and makes, you know, you, and you eat some food and you burn right through it because you're constantly training. Especially like um, wrestlers, because my nieces, they wrestle and they do jujitsu and stuff. And they're in competition, so they have to maintain a certain weight. And they, they're constantly doing something to maintain a certain physique and weight and all that stuff. So it's, it's uh, to be commended. I mean, that's pretty, um, pretty amazing. I know I couldn't do even half of that. Because you're not just controlling your time. You're controlling your physique and your physical... Uh, and mental state, you know, just to achieve at a high level too. Yeah. With sports. Yeah. I guess I shouldn't complain about drawing for a living, right? <laughs> <laughs> it could be a lot harder. Yeah, there's a lot of people who, who want to do this, man. They want to draw for a living. They want to. I know because I, I teach them. I teach these people all the time. They, you know, a bunch of them are our students. This is what they want to do. They want to quit their jobs and just draw comics. You know, mm -hmm. and that's something your parents typically encourage you not to do. <laughs> yeah, or I, I think with me, like they didn't say I should or shouldn't do it. They just kind of left me alone. And I think if you're not going to get encouragement, I guess being left alone is also good for the imagination to some extent. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That, um, solitary confinement. <laughs> <laughs> He's drawing on walls, the Sistine chapels, you know, that kind of stuff. Yeah, I know. It's crazy. All right, so I'm going to quickly... You know what's really cool about you drawing is I don't actually see what you're drawing, so I, I can't wait to see it when I, you send me the videos. It's going to be like magic. <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> Even for me, I, I, I love watching other people draw. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. Well, we'll see. Uh, yeah, I'll definitely get you a piece of this. Uh, you'll see what it looks like. <clears throat> so uh, you volunteered to do a, a variant cover for me. I'm I'm taking you up on that. <laughs> yeah, y'all do it. Oh, awesome. Well, we'll figure out the logistics and stuff. So. Okay. Yeah, we could do that. Get some going. Um. <clears throat> Since you draw so fast, you should just do the whole series. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I should. Uh. Uh, I wish I could, but I'm working on Stan Lee's Gen Genesis right now, so I don't know if I could do it. I tell you oh, yeah, I was going to ask you, how many books are you working on right now? So, there's a couple of them. Some of them I can't talk about, but I can talk about Stan Lee's Gen Genesis. So um, right now it's not a book. It's a board game. Where, so we're producing a board game. So it was. this is one of the projects that Stan Lee um, was creating before he passed. And... Um, um, I, don't, I don't know what stage of development it was in, but I know it was well. And it was one of the, the projects because I worked on three of them for you know to help uh, help him finish, or at least take the, the project to a specific stage. Um, there, uh, two of them were was was for a, a TV show. So, um, and this was something that happened last year. So, just a, a lot of that. If you, anyone knows about you know. To, television development it takes some time you know for that process to, to kick through so um so I, you will see in the future when that comes up but the board game is called stan lee's genesis um there's 200 brand new char characters no one has ever seen before um wow. um i concepted all 200 of them um with the help of tom akel um, who actually, he didn't do any art, but he did a lot of character writing and stuff like that. 
um, and Tom was in development with this with uh, with Stan before he passed. So, so I'm I'm working with Tom to help finish and help get this up and running. So the fans can see one of uh, Stan Lee's last um, projects that he was working on, what he was thinking of, you know, right around that time when when he didn't make it, you know. So. Yeah, that's, that's gonna be special. So, um, so with the board game, uh, that we're gonna be running the Kickstarter for it this summer, 2023. We're gonna be running the, 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 the Kickstarter for it. So you guys should keep an eye out for that and you'll be able to see um, what what this game is about. So um, I, I wish I could show you guys some, some of the, the board games that we've been working on, so. But I don't have I don't have the prototype. Yeah, that'll be episode two. Yeah, that'll be episode podcast, two. Right? yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'll have that for you guys ready. Let's see. Oh, your hand's moving fast. You must be shading something, right? Yeah, I'm creating okay. creating energy. Energy. Energy is a key. That's I learned that that that's where dynamics come from. You know, mm -hmm. um, you know, you, you have your, you, you, what you want to do is stay loose, throw your lines. That's, that's what creates dynamic shapes, dynamic po poses. Um, you just keep working in that direction. Just stay loose and just throw a lot of energy lines and then it'll come out. At the end of the day, you're going to be looking at your piece and it's going to be, it's going to pop. You know, so... I teach this. I teach how to keep your hands loose, how to do all this stuff here in my workshop. So, if you guys ever want to join the workshop at some point and come check it out, you will see. You will see me. I will leave a link to that in the video description as well. The Comic Pro Bootcamp. Yeah, Comic Pro Bootcamp. Yeah. And we also have an Instagram so you can follow us there. We, we keep you updated on all the new classes that's coming up, um, you know, so. Do you have writing in this, uh, these courses? I forgot to ask. Do I have any writing? No, we don't, it's, we don't have any writing. Um, we do have writers that, that are, are guest speakers, though. They will come in and they will talk mm -hmm. about writing and comics and stuff like that. But as far as, like, a writing course, no, no, we don't. This is all about the the other side of uh comics which is the the art side the product the art production side of it mm -hmm. sharpener <laughs> gotta sharpen my pencils which one i have i have one of those too actually uh it's called the um the afmat sharpener uh, i have something called uh, boss, boss, titich, B O S T I T C H. <laughs> yeah. Funny names for these kinds yeah. of partners, like hard to pronounce. Yeah. And I'm off of Amazon, and I like it a lot. Like sometimes I feel like bad because I'd sharpen my pencil just to have it sharp. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I know. Right. Yeah. It's the Wolverine. Oh. Almost done with the with this character, so. My dad bought us, my brother and I, a Wolverine comic, and that was the first ever superhero comic we got. Oh, yeah. And then, of course, everybody got the Jim Lee X-Men oh, edition. Oh, yeah. The pulled out covers, yeah? Uh -huh. you, oh, not, not how old you. Were, were you already working in comics nope. during that time? Or nope. getting into it? That's... Did that help... Uh, did that help, uh, like, push you in that direction? Yes, it did. That book? So um, that book, that Jim Lee book, is the reason I, I'm drawing comics right now. Um, I was, uh, you, you know, you know Brett, Brett Booth? Mm -hmm. Okay, so Brett and I went to, when we were in school together. Um, we went to the same college together. And I was sitting in class with Brett. We were, this was like the last week of school. We are getting ready to graduate. Um, and we're talking about, you know, what we're going to do when we gra graduate. And Brett said, yeah, he was, he was sitting with me and Sean Ruffner and a couple of the people. And we were talking about what we're going to do. And he was like, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to go draw with, uh, Jim Lee. I'm going to uh, draw comics with Jim, Jim Lee. I'm like, 
I'm like, who is Jim Lee? And then he sh he pulled out this book and he showed it to me, and my eyes went. Nee -nee -nee -nee. That's yeah. when I was like, what? There's someone who can draw like this? This is incredible. And then that's when I knew, I knew that from that day, I knew I wanted to, I wanted to um, draw, I wanted to draw comics. I knew from that's that day, awesome. I wanted to draw. So. Did you tell Jim that? Um, I think so. I think, or maybe I did. I don't remember. I, I know I've told this story before. Um, uh, I, I prob probably did tell it to Jim. I don't remember. So basically, um, what happened after that was um, uh, I, I, that's when I, uh, after we graduated, Brett, I stayed in touch with Brett, and Brett would um, um, tell me all about the studio and blah, 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 and this and that. And, and then we would... Um, he, I would send him submission pieces, and he would show it to Jim, and then Jim would give him feedback and say, this and this, you know, change this, fix this, you know, kind of like something like that. He, but he, Jim, Jim, he wasn't that in, intense, you know, with the with the with his criticism. It was more like, this is cool. Let me see more. It was more like that. <laughs> so I'm like, all right. Well, I'm like, so Jim Lee likes my art. I was like, okay, let's see what I what I can do. Uh, that's when I decided, okay, I'm, I'm really gonna put uh, put all my marbles into this. I'm gonna try to um, to get a job doing this. And then and at, around that time, because I was I was submitting work, and I I had nothing else to do. Uh, I decided to go back to school, and that's when I started to study digital arts, that's where I started to learn Photoshop and all these things, you know, so as I'm learning th those things, I'm still drawing and submitting stuff to, 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 for Jim to take a look at. Um, and one day, uh, I, I, I got the word again that Jim really likes my, my work, he, but he wants to see more. So that's when I, I decided, okay, I'm I already graduated, I have a degree. Um, I'm going to, I'm going to quit school and I'm just going to sit at home and only practice comic book art because I'm going to get this job. So that's what I did. So I called my dad and I told him, Hey, um, I am, I am, uh, I'm, I already have a degree. I'm going to quit. I'm going to, and I'm going to sit at home and practice and I need you to pay my, my rent for me so I can sit at home and practice. And he said, okay, so he would send me money every month just so I could pay my rent. And all I did was draw and sleep, draw and sleep, draw and sleep. And it took six months of me doing this before I got the, the, the dreaded phone call. Ring. Hello, who is this? This is Jim Lee. Jim Lee? Really? Yes, this is Jim Lee. Blah, 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 blah. I like your work. I want you to come work with me at my studio. Um, my secretary is going to send you uh, flight information, all this stuff, and all. This. I'm like, this is incredible. All right, okay, cool. Hung up the phone. I immediately went to this local comic shop that I would hang out with all the time. Like all my friends, we would all hang out there, and I I busted through the door, and they're all there, all of them. They're just like hanging out, and the first thing I said was, Jim Lee just hired me. I'm going to go work at Image Comics. And they all just stared at me, looking at me like this, like, what? <laughs> kind of like that. <laughs> so, you remember the, the TV show Comic Book Men? It was like, yeah, that yeah, sit, yeah. The, the, they would sit around and just talk comics. It was like that. That was, yeah, yeah. that's what I would do. I would <laughs> hang out at a comic shop with all these comic nerds, and we would just talk comics all day and play Street Fighter in the, in, behind, in the, in, somewhere, and there was a Street Fighter, uh, uh, arcade. arcade cabinet, yeah, so. yeah. And we would yeah. just play, play that all day long. <laughs> so the thing we would do, we do as kids. Right? like mine. That's what I did too. I did yeah, I was going to ask you. Go ahead. Got in touch with an editor, and yeah. uh, basically was going to school to be a you know Photoshop and all that stuff. Graduated, and I'm like, okay, well, I I got to focus on this comic book thing. So I did the same thing that you did, mm. and said, okay, I'm graduating. I told my dad, and he bought me a drafting table. Mm. So I started drawing. So it was the same thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh man. Yeah. Crazy how, how things go out in this world. So I'm pretty much done with this. I don't know if you can see it right here. That's so cool. I don't know if you Dude. can see it, but 
That is so sweet. Knocked it out really fast. Energy, man. Energy, energy. Yeah, like, and you can't do it in the hour mark. You're like, okay, I have to do it in an hour, so boom, 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 you get to produce pages really quick. Um, at the same time, it's not too tight, too restrictive. I like to give my inkers room to flex. So whenever someone comes to ink me, I'll hand them over this, the rough pencils. Um, and then in their brain, they're like, ah, they can feel the energy now. So it's up to them to try to, try to capture those lines in their techniques, their strokes, their brushes, their quills, whatever they, they use. Um, and they try to capture it and try to make it look neat. They're cleaning it up. So that's kind of where I like to do things and I, I just enjoy it. You know, this is something I've been doing for too much, too long. How long have you been in the industry? I've been in here for about 29 years now. I've been doing this. Uh, I think if you want to really boil it down, I'll say 10, 10, 11 years, give or take. Oh, okay. Yeah. Wow. Okay. Yeah. You yeah. met me right when I really started. Oh, that's when you when I met you when you first started. Wow. Okay. That was Didn't my know. first actual show going up, uh, going as a, an artist. So oh, wow. You you literally met me right when I started. I had and you no idea. That piece of advice that stuck with me it was the first one that first person in my ear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I had no idea. I, I I thought you were like in the industry or because I was I remember seeing your art and I was like, wow, okay, she's pretty good. Yeah. So. Well, I, I started, but I don't think I did any actual like interior stuff yet. So I was doing covers here and there, but I didn't feel like I really started up until uh, Emerald City that mm -hmm. year. Oh yeah. In Seattle, so that was cool. Yeah. Yeah. Was, Special. Yeah, that was crazy, crazy times. Well, so. Thank you for your time, man. And uh, you whipped this piece out. I can't wait to put this episode together. Really, it's gonna be so cool. Oh yeah. Um, to have the art in there too. Finally. Um. But, uh, yeah, thanks for doing this, uh, and I'm definitely going to have you back on because okay. you have all these new projects, and <laughs> we'll see how you do. We'll, we'll yeah. see how you do in two months, huh? Yeah, we'll see how we do. So so keep an eye out for Stanley Genesis. Um, um, that that's It's going to be a board game. We're going to be launching it in the summer of 23. The Kickstarter is going to be launched in like, the summer of 2023. Mm -hmm. So keep an eye out for that. The, the, we're building the prototype and everything right now. It's all being tested. Um and uh, also, I'm working on the next installment of the Brothers Ron comic, which you will see it down the road. Um, there's another book that I'm working on, which I, I, I can't talk too much about it, but you will see that down the road also. Um, uh, join Comic Pro Bootcamp. You, you know, whenever you get a chance, you want to learn a little bit more about comics, I will personally work with you. I'll look at some of your work and critique your work and show you where you're going right and wrong. Uh, not just me, you're going to learn from other instructors around me too at the same time. And um, follow me on Instagram, just, you know, my handle at Ryan B N J M N. just follow me there. And um, I guess that's the best way to get a, a hold of me too, if you need to get a hold of me, just just DM me. That's pr probably the best way. Just DM me, honestly. Don't email me, don't call, just DM. <laughs> yeah, that's probably it. Yeah, for sure. Well, thank you. Uh, I guess... We'll see you on the flip side. Yes. And, um, and I don't know. Thank you again. <laughs> thank you. All thank right. you. Thank you. Thank you. All right. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.